to cook some of Gordon's favorite dishes, including risotto. 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 Surprisingly, risotto is probably my favorite thing to cook. Um, honestly, before the show, before ever watching Hell's Kitchen, um, we see it a lot in college because we were broke. We eat a lot of ham steaks. <laughs> they were like a dollar eighty nine. It would feed all four of us, and um, we would just make uh, risotto, just blanch it, and then we would take all of our leftovers and make a big meal out of that. So, yeah, I've been cooking and eating risotto. Longer than I, longer than I like to admit. <laughs> How many times did you have to put it in the bin, as Gordon would say? Uh, risotto only, or all, all my food all over together. the competition tent. Um, risotto twice. Uh, risotto twice, and I, you know, the the welly situation happened our first night of service, so I couldn't for some reason. The, the steaks were cooked fine, uh, but the pastry, I couldn't get the pastry dough to fluff up. Um, it just it, it was staying raw on the inside, so that was countless, uh, countless beef wellingtons. But that was luckily the first night, and I was able to, you know, get it right. So, what's your trick to getting a beef wellington right? Well, not to use freezer burnt pastry dough is a, is a really good way to start. Uh, but yeah, it was once. I also had. I think we were all a little jittery that first night, so. Um, by the second or third day, I, you know, just had to tell myself, this is, you know, this is what I do. Like, I'm, I'm a chef, this is what I do. So, cook with confidence and uh, don't hesitate. So, I think that's what was kind of holding me back in that first dinner service. And maybe Gordon Ramsay a little bit? He yeah, can yeah, be a yeah, little of course. Yeah, he, um, it was actually a little, I think a little more Chef Andy, who obviously is trained under, under Chef Ramsay. But um, she showed me and, and the rest of my team some, some techniques to, in handling the dough and, making sure that it would, you know, stay throughout service until we were ready to fire it. And, um, you know, that was helpful because prior to entering the set, I had never even attempted a beef wellington. Um, but that would be my advice for anybody trying to get on Hell's Kitchen, cook scallops risotto wellington before you get there. You'll, you'll be all right. Excellent. Now, um, first time in the restaurant, what's your impression? It's amazing. It really is. I, I mean, I followed the construction online um, since it started. And, um, I remember watching the, the light fixture being hanged, and um, it, it's just, it's so brilliant, you know, to see it all together rather than just little bits and pieces, and the channel is gorgeous, and I thought it was going to be more of a, like, a subway-looking thing, you know, like, I, I don't I don't know why I had that in my head, but, um, yeah, it's really, it's so sleek and, and very clean, and um, honestly, I think it's, it's very Chef Ramsay, so I, I love it, I think it's beautiful. Which of your, you know, signature dishes of your own? Which yeah. ones do you want to bring to the menu here? Um, this is for you too. Okay. I'm gonna have to get I'm gonna have to get used to um, West Coast produce. Um, I'm, I'm from New Jersey and I live in Philly, and I get really spoiled by hitting all four seasons. And um, so I'm not I'm, I'll have to you know kind of lean on Chef E for that um, as far as produce goes. Um, I'm really excited about the about having such. Um, Local, like wild local fish, um, I think a little readily available. You guys out of California have done a lot of nice, in Alaska, a lot of nice local halibut. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for, for working with that. We do a lot of farm race on the East Coast. So, um, I, I mean, there's a, there's a world of difference in the flavor. So um, I, I'd like to just incorporate a few of my techniques into, again, um, after being custom with the, with the products here, I'll, I'll try and get my own twist on it. We'll take you downtown. Yeah. There's a farmer's market down oh, there. Oh, really? And a lot of the chefs, you probably go down there, the downtown third. A lot of the chefs go down there. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of things I'm sure Kevin will introduce you to. Yeah, so. that's um, t typical for us in, in Philadelphia. We'll hit the farmer's markets come for us on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. So we'll get there maybe 6 a.m. Saturday morning, based our Saturday night specials off of, you know, our bounty from the day. And then um, the leftovers we use for Sunday brunch. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'm excited. I didn't realize that that was... I'm not very familiar with Vegas, um, I guess, unfortunately. You so, that. yeah, um, I <laughs> I just imagine the bright lights in the strip and, and mm -hmm. the women that dance in Jubilee, and I, I so I don't know much more how to think much much more beyond that. So, um, yeah, I'm excited to, to get that kind of tour. It'll be fun. I have another. Okay. Oh, I have another. You worked at like Lolito mm -hmm. in Philadelphia and Mercado, Mercado which yes. is very small restaurant. Very small. To this. Yes, I know. I'm, uh, that's another thing I'm a little nervous. Um, I'm really excited that it's an open kitchen. I have so much more room. Uh, <laughs> my kitchen at Mercado was yeah. definitely smaller than the lounge, um, and I haven't worked. I've always worked on a three-man team. It, I'd run saute, I'd have one girl guy and, um, you know, one salad person, and then in the back maybe a charcuterie and a dessert. Um, a lot of times it would have to be my dishwasher hopping off to jump on. So. 
Um, that's another thing, you know, even being on the show and, and working under Chef Ramsay, you know, he doesn't he doesn't cut corners. Where as I think some of the restaurants I came from, they in in order to cut costs, they cut corners. And so I'm excited to just you know be be at that standard of Chefy and, and Chef Ramsay and, and see what happens there. But I'm I'm really excited that it's in an open kitchen. Um, it's kind of that that narcissistic side of me where you like to see somebody really enjoying their food yeah. uh, that you just made uh, as soon as they get it. So uh, that'll that'll be a nice ego strip to, to be able to look out and see that. Is the, was the show as intense as it seems? Absolutely. Yeah, it really was. I, I mean, it probably took me um, a good six weeks or so to decompress um, coming home from it. And then, uh, I mean, and a lot is the production, you know, it's, it's a lot of, you know, get dressed, get ready and wait. And so I would, I would get ready to go out and I would just sit there and wait. And I don't know what I was waiting for, a phone call, a car, I, was, I don't know. And my girlfriend would always say, if you're ready, let's go. And oh, yeah, that's right. We can leave and go on our own free will. And um, even, you know, it took me a while to learn to speak freely and to not get changed, you know, in the bathroom with the door closed. Like it just, just little things that you, you have to learn quickly to adapt to on set. Um, and then you go home and you're so conditioned to, you know, act one way. So it took me a while. Uh, to shake that and then it was frustrating going uh, you know I spent I think it was 10 days that I 10 or 10 days maybe two weeks until I started working again I, I couldn't sit still um, my buddy needed help at Mercado so I went went there and it was it was frustrating I mean I'm, I go from a place where everything gets checked everything gets tasted um, if it's even if it's an A minus it's getting sent back to a restaurant where people weren't tasting any it blew my mind I was like you're not gonna taste what? Like, I, I, you know, saw it go from hand to plate to, to customer and without even a, a double check on seasoning. So that was, um, that was hard. And I, I actually, we butted heads a little bit and I ended, ended up taking her job essentially. And, um, she's out in California now, but it just, it was, it's amazing, um, how much you, you raise your own standard after working under him. And was there a moment on the show that, you know, you look back on your, and you know, like, yeah. I, I can do this, you're like, I can win this? Um, I don't know that I ever, I, I kept my goals much more sh short term. Um, I, I always just said, all right, Chris, you have to wake up here tomorrow morning. Like, that's all, like, you get through today. And there were days that I had really great days, and, and I, I reveled in it, and I put my head down on the pillow, and when I woke up, I had to let it go. And, and I had to do the same thing with my bad days, because as soon as, soon as I, if I would have let myself get too happy with my performance, you rest on your heels, and that's when somebody will push ahead of you. Um, if you get too down on yourself, you know, you, you go back on your heels, so you cower, and you, you lose that confidence in your cooking. So um, I think, and it, it was funny watching the finale, because um, it was, the, you know, the first time I saw it. And I kind of remembered walking through the door, and I remember stepping back in it, because I couldn't believe that it was, I was just like, wait, did this just, yeah, this just happened, right? Wait, and I'm like, look at a chef, and Justin's still there, like, okay, I can go forward. But, um... No, I never, it, it's not, I don't think that I ever thought, yes, I'm going to win this. I think that I was, I was really, you know, I refound my confidence. It took me a couple days to get my feet and just get, just get my rhythm in the kitchen. And, and once I did, I, I just did what comes natural to me. And I, I was able to step up as a leader on my team without announcing. I know Patrick on the blue side, they had to announce like, oh, I'm the leader now, I'm the leader now. Um, I'm glad that that just kind of naturally happened on my side of the kitchen. And, you know, it led me to, to Vegas. And what was that moment when the door actually opened? Uh, first, I can tell you that Chef Ramsay is the slowest counter I've ever, <laughs> ever been around. You know, that one, two, three, for me, lasted like 20 minutes. Um, and when I opened the door again, like, I took a step back because I just, I was shocked in it. And it was a, I think it was a variety of things. It was winning. It was, it was knowing that it was over. Uh, you know, that was it. Like, there was no, like, I couldn't, I couldn't have done any better, um, you know, having walked through that door and... It really took, I was so nervous I was going to trip down the steps, <laughs> and whenever he goes up and he runs, and he's like, you know, kind of got this bounce in his step, so, and I was, you know, I just looked down, and it didn't really, it didn't really hit me that it was real until, um, until I saw Chef Andy in the crowd, actually, and she just kind of caught eyes with me and, and gave me a nod, and, and that's what, like, I covered my face, and I was like, oh my god, this, this is really happening, I, I get to walk down and, and hug my family and high-five my team that did a, a brilliant, a brilliant job for me, I, I, I really buried them with my menu, and um, they, they pulled it out, and, and for no other reason but to, you know, and like I told him, I, talk, I took a lot of slack online for saying, oh, have fun, have fun, um, but I think when you have fun with your cooking, like, it shows in the food, and, and I think that, 
you know, that kind of energy, your, your customers feel it and, it, and it makes it an experience rather than just a meal. Did you have a specific way of going into this competition that you were going to maybe play back your skills, play up your skills? Did you have a strategic idea of what you were going to do prior to going in, and then did it stay the same or change yeah. while you were in competition? Um, the first couple of days there, you know, it's really surreal because you, you watch it on TV and you hear about it and you think, oh, it's you know, you're hanging out with Chef Ramsay and, and there's cameras and it's so much fun, and so you have this idea that you're only going to work like half a day or like a regular day. And, it's not that at all. Um, my biggest thing is that after our signature dish challenge, that was our first time in the kitchen, and I tried to really pay attention to where how the layout of the kitchen and where everything was. Um, so first, first dinner service, you know, we got a, a manual. It's pretty thick. You know, there's uh, six different stations, and I knew. I said I'm not going to speak up until I know every station, until I am like I feel comfortable in every single station, um, prepping it and and turning it out for service. So. I kind of held back like that first week or so. I, I think a lot of people said I, I flew under the radar, which I just, you know, for me, I wanted, I, I couldn't expect to stand up and be a leader if, if I didn't know where I was leading us. So I just really wanted to take it all in and, and learn every station. And once I felt confident and that was under my belt, and like I said, I, you know, I got my footing in the kitchen and found my rhythm, um, then it was easy for me to kind of take that natural, natural lead and, um, you know, try and encourage my team. And, and we did well, you know, we won a lot of dinner services, did well on challenges. So. Um, yeah, in the beginning I knew I didn't want to, there was a lot of people that came out of the gates with really big personalities, and, right. and maybe that's them, um, but for me I just, I, I needed to keep my head down, my ears open, my mouth shut, my hands moving, until um, until I knew, you know, exactly everything that needed to come out of the kitchen and, and to what, what level of quality. So now you have six weeks of training. Do you, yes. Kevin, do you maybe want to talk about that, what she'll be doing for the next six weeks? Um, basically, she's just going to be uh, learning every station. She'll spend the week on each station, and the final week she'll be uh, working with the prep guys and learning how to expedite at night. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Uh, not too bad. I saw my schedule. <laughs> and that's another thing I think a lot of people, and I'm sure there's going to be handshaking and all that, but um, I think a lot of people believe that it's going to be some cush job, but I can tell you there's like an eight pound manual sitting on my bed that I've been reading for the past week, and it's not, I mean, it's Chef Ramsey, it's Chef either both decorated, and, and um, it's a, it's, you know, it's a real job, it was a real interview, and, you know, yeah, we were on TV, and, and we had challenges and rewards and all that, so it made, it makes it unique from any other kind of job interview, but no, I mean, I'm, I'm excited to be here, and I'm, I'm so ready just to get back to, to doing what I love to do, so. Yeah, it's, 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 it's going to be growing. <laughs> so talking about big personalities, besides Gordon Ramsay, who was the biggest personality that you were working <laughs> against or, or with? Um, the biggest. <laughs> uh, I, think that, I think the other bedroom, uh, the other women's bedroom, uh, they all, they all kind of had big personalities. Um, you had Rob and Kimmy and Tiffany in there. Um, sometimes the three of them together were, were fun and, and good, and sometimes the three of them were um, uh, difficult and, and challenging, but again, I think everybody had their, their own approach, and mm -hmm. I'm happy with the with the road that I took. I mean, I don't I don't think that I would be here otherwise. Um, the guys said I didn't really have to deal with too much until Black Jackets, and at that point, uh, we had been doing so well that it was down. It was only Justin and Clemenza that were uh, uh, two guys that I hadn't worked with yet, so otherwise I knew. By the time we got to Black Jackets, I was used to working with Robin. Like, I knew what to expect, and, and she is a good chef. Um, it, it's a, uh, you know, we're in a pressure cooker, and it, I, I think it brings out the best and the worst in people. Um, luckily, I, you know, I have a sister-in-law who's a teacher, and she told me before I left for the show, be careful with your words, because you can always add on, but you can never take away. And so I try to, I try to keep that in mind while That's I was good. out there. And, um, yeah, that was, <laughs> it was tough. Chef Scott actually is also um, really intimidating and almost, almost worse than Chef Ramsey. Uh, his voice is very gruff. And uh, he's kind of expressionless in his face, so even when he's paying you a compliment, you still feel like you're in trouble. Um, and he loved us on the red side because when we did have to come over and finish service for the blue, blue side a few times, um, I know my first time over there, I stopped. When we went to Black Jackets, I was like, Chef, I can't work like this. It was filthy. It was dirty. And he loved us because we were clean. And, you know, wipe your board after you do everything, clean your knife, you know, put things away. And... The other side had, you know, he had Clemenza, you got Brian making jokes, you got, you know, um, he had some, 
some characters over there, too. Yeah, Clemenza definitely went through a couple of jackets. Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> Clemenza, oh, that poor guy. Um, <laughs> he was so much fun, though. Like, what, I mean, he, and I think, I think a lot of the viewers will say the same. Um, he was such a crowd pleaser, and he really can cook. He, he took care of us um, pretty good on our... The nights that we did actually all get to sit down and have dinner together, a lot of times it was Clem that was cooking. Um, I've never seen somebody eat so much prosciutto for breakfast, uh, <laughs> but he's <laughs> and uh, he used to he called the whole show. He called me pork chop. I went head to head with him on signature dish. He was yeah. so mad because I kept my dish simple. And to me, you say cook my signature dish, not not something that I would want on a menu. This is what I cook when people come over in the fall. You know, we go out and we'll grab some squash from the yard and. Barbie's Farm is actually where we get our pork from, or near Barbie's Farm is where we get our pork from, so he was really mad because he had gone, you know, a couple steps up and done something different, so he called me pork chop the whole show. <laughs> About two weeks in, his team was like, oh, you know, halfway through prep, Clemenza gets cranky because we're not allowed to break for snacks or anything. I said, all right, I'll help, I'll help this guy. I love fun. So I would make a sandwich upstairs, you know, and I would wrap half and put it in my pocket, and I'd eat half and get back downstairs and prep we see each other in the hallway going to the pantry. It's like, big guy, you hungry? Yeah. So I call him Snack Pack because I know I'm like, I got a snack pack for you. Don't worry. And he, you know, pop something in his mouth quick and go back in and not be so cranky for the, for the guys. But, uh, yeah, Clemenza is great. That's cool. Any more questions, Susan? Uh -huh. You're good? You're good? I know we need a few more minutes.